It is football day in America. Hallelujah. Yeah. How we doing? We got three days left of Tom Brady's free square on prize picks. What are you doing if you haven't nailed it yet? Literally go download the prize picks app. They will allow you to put real money on Tom Brady 0.5 passing yards. If Tom Brady has a single passing yard on Sunday against Dallas, y'all are going to be a winner on prize picks. Okay? Download the app. Use promo code BDGE. When you deposit for the first time, they are going to 100% match whatever you put down. So if you put down 10, you're going to have 20. If you put down 40, you're going to have 80. You can do this up to $100 and then go nail Tom Brady. What do you want to pair it with? Whatever. I like Jonathan Taylor over 100 rushing yards against Houston. I even like tonight in today's game. I like Cam Akers under 60 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. Okay. His rushing line is at like 43. His receiving line is at 11. That adds up to like 54. So I don't know why they're giving him six or seven extra yards of juice that he needs to account for. I think he's going to struggle a little bit. I don't think he's going to be too involved in the passing game. I think that's going to be a lot of Darrell Henderson. Regardless, under 60 and a half rushing plus receiving yards tonight for Cam Akers. We like a bunch of them on Sunday, but we will get to that once the videos progress into the weekend. But right now, what you got to do is hit Tom Brady 0.5 passing yards on prize picks, people. Don't forget promo code BDGE if it's your first time depositing. Today's video, we are getting into our running back rankings for week one. We're going to go through our top 25 running back rankings very, very quickly to get you spiced up a little bit for the season and all of our rankings will be available on bdge.co under the subscriptions tab a lot of you guys bought the season long draft guide that was just a draft guide that was to help you throughout the summer and through your draft but our subscriptions package will get you access to our in-season weekly rankings as well as a private q a q and assault live stream i do every saturday so if you want that go check out bdge.co under the subscriptions tab let's get into it <laughs> Should be no surprise to you, but I got Jonathan Taylor as my RB1 on the week against Houston. This was a matchup last year where he went off for, it was like 132 and 145 rushing yards in their two matchups. They should dominate game script. He should dominate touches and go berserk. Christian McCaffrey is our RB2 against Cleveland. Doesn't really matter what the matchup is as long as his tendons and his ligaments and his muscles stay intact. He will touch the ball a ton. So Christian McCaffrey probably going to finish as the RB1 if he stays on the field, but I feel more comfortable with JT and his workload and the safety of him staying on the field. So regardless, I'm kind of going to zoom through these first, these 12 dudes because uh, the RB1s, I mean, they're all in your lineup. You're not making flex fucking decisions based on whether or not you should start Najee Harris or Alvin Kamara. All of them are in your lineup. If you have questions like that, then you should find a different league to play in, to be honest, which got Dalvin Cook at three versus Green Bay. I'm just really, really excited to see Dalvin Cook play this year. I mean, they've been, you know, trade rumors about getting rid of Alexander Madison. I think under the new coaching staff, they're going to be pass friendly, which means a lot of receptions for Mr. Dalvin Cook. And I just think this is the year that he goes fucking nuclear. He's already done it a few times, but I think we get, you know, vintage Dalvin Cook this year. Austin Eckler is my RB4 on the week. He's getting the Raiders. This should be a very high scoring game. This should be a game in which they don't even really have an RB2 there in Los Angeles. So I think Eckler gets fed uh, a workload similar to what he did last year. And this is one of the highest over-unders of the week. So there should be a lot of passing, a lot of scoring, a lot of touchdown opportunities for Mr. Eckler. We have Derrick Henry as my RB5 against the New York Giants. This is a game script that they should dominate. He should get a lot of touches. The Giants' run defense was sneakily really, really good last year. So I'm wondering if, you know, Derrick Henry getting a little older. I'm not really worried about the injury, but it's another thing we could just kind of throw in there. He's the RB5 on the week. Don't worry about it. Alvin Kamara is the RB6 against Atlanta. This should be a game script that the Saints probably handle pretty well. But regardless, Alvin Kamara's averaged like eight receptions a game against Atlanta over the last, over his entire career. Every time they step on the field against the Falcons, it is literally just dump off to Alvin Kamara every five seconds. It is nauseating as a Falcons fan. At number seven, we have Najee Harris against Cincinnati. I think this team is still going to revolve around Najee Harris. I don't know what's going on with Deontay Johnson. The shoulder injury apparently is still bothering him, and his status for week one is very much up in the air. If he is out, a lot of those short targets might revert back to Najee Harris. And don't forget, that big 19-target, 14-catch game last year came against Cincinnati, so maybe they come in with the same game plan. So Najee Harris is my RB7 on the week. DeAndre Swift is my RB8 against Philadelphia. It's a good defense. Um, I do think Philly's offense will be scoring and putting a ton of pressure on Detroit, which in turn would make Jared Goff need to throw the ball a lot. When the Lions throw the ball a lot, DeAndre Swift catches a lot of passes. He's just one of the best young explosive running backs in the league. Don't overthink this. Joe Mixon is at nine versus Pittsburgh. Honestly, I'd think about moving him down a little bit. Pittsburgh's got a pretty good run defense, but they should. This is a really interesting matchup, honestly. I'm kind of excited to see what these defenses really are. 
I, I think we know uh, what the Cincinnati offense is. It's awesome. I think we need to see third and long situations, passing down situations. Does Joe Mixon get a little bit more work here? He's just a solid low-end RB1. Aaron Jones comes in at 10. Nick Chubb at 11. Saquon Barkley at 10. 12. So the Barkley one is probably one of the more intriguing rankings for a lot of you guys. I have them down at 12. Tennessee is low-key a, a pretty good defense. Uh, the Giants, I don't know how many scoring opportunities are going to come across in this game. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how their offense runs. New coach, new offensive line, you know, they're healthier than usual. So maybe they move the ball down the field more often, but maybe Saquon gets like 20 to 22 touches that aren't that valuable. Uh, either way, he's in your lineup, obviously. Then I have Uncle Lenny as the RB13. I'm a little bit worried about the interior of this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line. So I don't know if we're going to see Lenny, you know, get 16 carries, but average 3.4 yards per carry. Regardless, this should be a very, very high scoring game. Tampa Bay versus Dallas. I'd imagine a lot of passing work, which is good for Leonard Fournette, obviously, because he's a big beneficiary of Tom Brady dumping off to his running backs, which has been a theme throughout his career. And we saw Leonard Fournette come to fruition uh, last offseason. So to be honest with you, I might actually move these rankings around a little bit. We just did that in real time. I don't even know if these saved from yesterday, to be honest with you. So we're just going to kind of talk through it out loud. Saquon's up at RB10. Lenny's RB11. I think he probably catches like five to six passes minimum in this game. Then Aaron Jones is at RB12 against Minnesota. Uh, you know, they're just going to use their RBs at a very, very high level because those are the two best offensive players. Alan Lazard is banged up too. So if he's off the field, that gives more targets and receptions to the running back group. I moved Nick Chubb down to 13. I mean, we know what Nick Chubb is at this point. He's also behind Jacoby Brissett, and they're against Carolina. Carolina is going to be a very, very underrated defense this year. I think they handle the run very well. I'm excited to see whether or not they're actually a good team because I think they have the pieces in place, the foundation in place to be a pretty underestimated squad there in Carolina. So Nick Chubb's at 13. James Conner, I have at 14, which I probably could move up a little bit higher. They're going against Kansas City. They're, they they lost a lot of offensive weapons this offseason, right? So James Conner should see a little bit of an uptick in the passing game, even if Eno or Darrell Williams plays a role there. Uh, so James Conner in at 14. I have Jamonta Williams in at 15 against Seattle. This should be a game script in which Denver kind of dominates. So uh, Melvin Gordon, Jamonta Williams should both get a ton of opportunities to showcase that fucking dynamic duo that they are in Denver. After Javante Williams, we have David Montgomery against San Francisco. David Montgomery throughout the uh, summer and the times that he was on the field, he dominated the first string snaps. So it tells me that he's probably slated to be the workhorse again for at least September. Uh, I don't think that will hold up throughout the entire offseason. I think Khalil Herbert, the entire season, I think Khalil Herbert were, will continue to eat into his workload a little, a little bit. But for right now, David Montgomery is the guy in Chicago. Tough matchup against San Francisco, but he should get enough volume. And on the flip side, we have Elijah Mitchell, who is not on the injury report. So he should be all good to go. All systems fucking go for Mr. Elijah Mitchell. The Chicago Bears defense is not the same Bears defense we've come to know it to be. Akeem Hicks is gone. Akeem Hicks was like the sole reason you didn't want to start running backs against the Chicago defense. He is now in Tampa Bay. I think Elijah Mitchell actually comes out and has a really, really strong week one game. I think he might actually explode this week. Wouldn't be surprised if I made a video next week about trade targets and Elijah Mitchell was a sell high player. But I think week one, he kind of goes a little bit bonkers and I can make the case to move him above David Montgomery. And I just fucking did. After him, we've got Josh Jacobs, who's another player like you'll see this theme of me ranking guys that I don't like in like the top 20. This is what happens in September and October. We don't like guys because over the long run, we think they will evaporate and their touches will go down and the competition behind them will eventually rise up, right? No matter how much coffee you pour into the pot, the cream always rises to the top. Josh Jacobs is a perfect example where I think he'll come out the gate because they're familiar with him and he'll get 18 to 20 touches immediately. And then they'll start to dwindle as the season goes by. But for right now, I feel confident with his workload. Right behind him, we have A.J. Dillon against Minnesota. I still, you know, I love A.J. Dillon. I think he's going to be a baller this year. I still need to see the dynamic of the two running backs and how much they do end up playing on the field together, how much involvement in the passing game Dillon does get when Aaron Jones is healthy. Uh, so I'll, I'll put him in his RB19 right now. I do want to get him to my lineups for sure in week one if I have the room to, but he'll settle in as 19. Zeke right behind him at 20. As I just mentioned, Akeem Hicks goes to Tampa Bay. This is a, a ferocious fucking Tampa Bay defense. It is very, very, very hard to uh, run against. We saw Zeke struggle against them last year, and we've seen most running backs struggle against them. So Zeke, uh, I'm, in, I'm intrigued to see what, what sort of passing workload he gets here with all the weapons either out or shipped off from Dallas. So I think he could make me look stupid just by catching like five to six passes in this game. But for right now, I'll put Zeke down at 20 because I don't think he'll have a lot of rushing success in this one. Travis Etienne is 21. Um, I think with James Robinson coming back, I wouldn't be surprised if James Robinson got anywhere from like two to 10 touches in this one. I am still wildly skeptical about 
James Robinson's health and his explosiveness coming back. So I think for the first month of the season, they are going to ride Travis Etienne into the dirt. But this Washington front is, I know Chase Young is going to be out for a minute, but the rest of them are still really, really, really strong. This is a very tough defense to run against. So Etienne can definitely disprove this ranking if he catches a ton of passes, which he's, you know, that's what he's there to do with Trevor Lawrence. Um, But I got Etienne down to 21. I think he is the workhorse for right now, but it is a very tough matchup and we don't know what he's going to do on the ground. Right behind him on the other side of the ball, we've got Antonio Gibson, obviously with B-Rob out. Gibson comes back in as like the early down guy, the goal line guy. And that could be a nice little role here against Jacksonville, who they should be able to move the ball against. Even if they're not a good offense, they should score, you know, three or so touchdowns. Maybe one of them goes to Gibson. Maybe he is a little bit more involved in the receiving game as they've tried to get him more in space this summer, even though they've tried to get him out of the fucking depth chart this summer. A lot of moving parts here. I'm still not sold on Gibson being a good player, but the fact that the depth chart is completely wide open, I think you got to put him inside your top. You know, he's got to be an RB2 this week, and we'll see what happens from there. Same thing with Rashad Penny, where Kenneth Walker, we don't know his status for week one. I am way more pessimistic about it. I don't think he suits up, but we'll see. Even if he does, I don't think he'll be heavily involved. It's Rashad Penny's backfield, but the Denver defense is very, very good. This is a Seattle offense. It's very slow. They have a poor offensive line. They're not going to have a lot of scoring opportunities. So I think Penny, you can kind of make the same case that I just did with Gibson, where he's getting all the work. I just like the situation for Washington this week in particular better than I do for Seattle against Denver. So Penny should get a big workload, 16 to 18 touches like minimum. But what he does with them, anybody's fucking guess. Damian Pierce right behind him. So Damian Pierce against Indy. Indy's a good, tough defense, tough uh, defense to run against. It is week one. So We'll see what happens with the Pierce workload, right? We're all excited from the preseason. He gets six carries on like six first team snaps. How does that play over the entire game? Does Rex Burkhead actually become more involved when they get down? Let's say Indy goes up 14 nothing in the first half. Does that become a big, does Rex Burkhead start to get full drives to himself? I don't know. I love Damian Pierce and I could probably argue to put him above Rashad Penny. And I could probably argue to put him above Antonio Gibson. I'm going to throw him above Penny for right now and move Pierce up to the RB23 because I do feel confident that he's the starter there. I do feel confident that he is a really good player. I do feel confident that he will get the touches in this one. You know, I just kind of want to see it a little bit before I get ahead of myself. Uh, So he is at 23 and 25 rounding out this list is Mr. Damian Harris. Okay. Damian Harris, I think will start the year. Another one of these guys that will continue to fall a little bit further and further down his depth chart with Ramondre Stevenson ascending. But for right now, I think Damian Harris has earned the respect in that backfield coming off the 15 touchdown season against Miami. This is going to be a pretty tough defense, but I think it's one where they'll get a few goal line opportunities. I think those will go to Damian Harris to start the year. This is more of like he's RB 25 right now. You're not like fucking really excited to get him into your lineup, but I think there's a a coin flip chance that he gets into the end zone. Probably has between, you know, 50 and 70 total yards in this one. That can give you a nice like 12 to 14 point cushion. Um, So that's Damian Harris. I know a lot of you guys are going to ask about Chase Edmonds and Miles Sanders and Devin Singletary and Clyde Richelieu and all those types of guys who are obviously in my rankings, just not in the top 25 or right outside of them. You will be able to get the rankings on BDGE dot co through the subscriptions part of the website you have to go to products and then there will be a tab for subscriptions the season-long draft guide is not how you get the in-season weekly rankings but more importantly if you want to go support the brand what you want to do is have the prize picks download the app first link in the description and that will take you to the app that'll allow you to deposit ten dollars or more using promo code bdge and go nail that tom brady 0.5 passing yards people i could not be louder about this sheesh go nail it go bring home the revenue Go put food on the table for your kids. Pay the mortgage. Do whatever you got to do. Go fucking take your wife to build a bear. Do something nice for her for a change. I love y'all. Enjoy Thursday Night Football. And football is fucking bike.